Greg McDermott needs to be fired. What are we waiting on here? What's going on, everybody? This is Temperature Check. I am your host as always, man. Mr. Check the Temperature, how y'all doing? Before we get started with today's content, I must do what I always do anytime you see me on your screen. And that's thank you guys for the likes, comments, shares, most importantly, those subscriptions. So whether you be a day one fan, Somebody who just started rocking with the channel today, man, I greatly appreciate it. And if you're loving what I got going on my YouTube and you want to see more of me, easy money, man. You follow me, I'll follow you right back. We'll build this thing up together. You know how it go. So hit me up on Twitter, Mr. Temp Check. Follow me on Instagram, Mr. Check the Temperature. I'm even on Clubhouse now, Mr. Dot Temp Check. But what have I always said when referencing Temperature Check's definition and referencing Temperature Check as a whole? It's a... Infinity and Tundra. It works for every category. It works for every subsection. It works for every topic in the community. So by definition, temperature check means unapologetically seeking answers in everyday life. And so we don't just talk about battle rap here. We don't just talk about sports here. We don't talk about just the community topics. We talk about a multitude of things. But I neglected the community and I neglected sports for the past couple of weeks. However, I've just been waiting and sitting back. I wanted a storyline that I felt compelled to talk about. I didn't want to talk about just everything. I wanted to make sure I was very passionate about this topic that I'm referencing. I didn't have to wait long. And the inspiration happened in my own backyard of Omaha, Nebraska. Creighton University. Creighton men's basketball coach. Greg McDermott father of former Creighton basketball star Doug McDermott and former or current NBA player Doug McDermott. Let me holler at you. So I understand uh, February 27th after an emotional loss to Xavier in your post-game sediments to your team and to your staff, you decided to use some, some words that are not even used in everyday language. You decided to use a reference and use an analogy that is probably number, I don't know, 10 million on the list of sports analogies to use in 2021. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you still don't know what I'm talking about, let me read you his apology. On February 27th, after an emotional, tough loss on the road, I addressed our student athletes and staff in the post-game locker room and used terribly inappropriate analogy in making a point about staying together as a team despite the loss. Specifically, I said, guys, we got to stick together. We need both feet in. I need everybody to stay on the plantation I can't have anybody leave the plantation. I immediately recognized my egregious mistake and quickly addressed my use of such insensitive words with the team. I have never used that analogy and it is not indicative of who I am as a person or as a coach. I am deeply sorry. I have apologized to our student athletes and to our staff, as well as the president Hendrickson and director of athletics, Bruce uh, Ramusin. Over the last 72 hours, I have engaged in multiple different conversations with student athletes, staff, parents, and the university administrators, and I realized the pain that my words have caused. For that, I sincerely apologize. I am committed to ensure that this will never happen again, and I am using this as a learning experience. While there remains work to be done and trust to earn back, I appreciate our student athletes' honesty and will remain in open dialogue as we grow and learn together. Nope, I'm not rocking with that. I'm not rocking with that, sir. Let me give you my let me give you my background. I've played on a multitude of sports teams. I've been coached by great coaches, terrible coaches, average coaches, outstanding coaches. I've played high school, I played collegiate, I played semi. I am a high school official for varsity basketball, baseball, and football. So I'm around coaches all the time almost on a daily basis. I have never, ever heard anyone use plantation in a positive analogy in referencing sports. Never. 
usually when we're referring to the plantation in sports, it's always a negative connotation that goes with that. I'm just saying. When we reference the plantation in sports, we kind of, we talk about Caucasian owners, white owners trading away African American men. That don't sound like standing together. When we look at college, college athletes, college student athletes, as you refer to them, making the institution that they represent millions upon millions upon millions of dollars yearly. How much money do you make a year? Millions. But the student athletes, as you refer to them, get nothing in return. They get a couple hoodies. They get a couple jackets. They might see their name on a poster or two. But that's it. So when you're using plantation, not to mention, just, just to kind of put this in, in, in perspective, what's today's date? It's March 3rd. That means Black History Month just ended, what, three days ago? And this is the, and you used it during Black History Month. This is the analogy that you used? No, I'm not jocking that. I don't believe that this was unintentional. I don't believe this was a slip of the tongue. Because again, plantation is not a word that comes up in everyday life. You can miss me with that. You can miss me with that analogy. There's mi literally millions of analogies you could have used to bind the team together, to, to bring the team together, to hold them firm in their beliefs that Creighton University is still one of the top programs in the nation and that you guys were going to recover from a single loss. Let's put this in perspective. This was a single loss. And you need everyone to have both feet on the plantation, to not leave the plantation. Your words, not mine. So what, do we, what, what does that say about Creighton basketball program? What does that say about Creighton University as a whole? And I'm speaking like this because I live in this city. I know the students that go there and that have gone there. Especially the, the people of color. There is, there is a culture at Creighton University that is not welcoming to people of color. I've had some of my brightest students go to Creighton University and leave in a semester, leave in a year. And, and solely off of the fact that it wasn't the classes that were hard. They did well in the classes. It was everything that happened outside of the classes. It's the looks that they get on campus. It's not feeling like they are supported on campus. And then you have one of the most prominent Basketball programs in the country led by a head coach using this type of language. He should be fired right now, right? What are we waiting on? And I know what people are already asking. It was a slip of the tongue. He's not allowed to make a mistake. He apologized. So I already know what Creighton supporters are saying. Oh, give him another chance. Oh, he, he made a mistake. It's a slip of the tongue, right? However... What did you do with Maurice Watson in 2017? Did you give him an opportunity? Did you let the legal system play out? Innocent till proven guilty, right? What did you do to Maurice Watson, Creighton University? What did you do to Maurice Watson, Creighton basketball team? When he was accused of rape in 2017, he was already not playing basketball because he got the knee injury right before... Uh, the accusations came out correct. So he was already out of the spotlight. Y'all could have let the legal system play out. But what did you do to what did you do to Mr. Wat what did you do to Mr. Watson? Oh, when soon as the accuser came forward and the charges came up, you kicked them off the team, you kicked them off campus. But what happened in September of the same year? So this happened in February. What happened in September of the same year? Charges dismissed. Charges dismissed. And Maurice and Maurice Watson, let's not make no mistake about it. At that point in time, he had got Creighton to a top 10 team in the nation. They were top 10 in the nation when this happened, when, his, when he sustained his injury. He got them there. So when he looked for y'all for support, what did y'all do? You pulled the chair right from, out, from under him. 
You said you got to handle this on your own. You left them high and dry. So, when I say he needs to be fired, that's no, that's no difference from what y'all did with Maurice Watson and you removed him from campus, right? For the protection of the students, right? But what about Mr. Watson's career? What about Maurice's career? What about his college degree that he was supposed to get, he was projected to obtain by the end of that semester? A couple more months from graduation and you took everything from him. NBA prospect. Do you think he had an opportunity to go to the NBA after that happened? After the accusations came out? After you guys turned your back on him, not as a not only as a basketball program, but as a university? Do you think he got that opportunity back? Nobody wanted to touch him. He was damaged goods. Why? Because you guys did not let the justice system play out. You guys jumped to the conclusion. You guys did not support the very same person that came to your campus that you made the poster child for the program. So now y'all are in a very interesting position. Creighton University, Greg McDermott, you're in a very interesting position right now. Why is that? National Signing Day is coming up. Let's, let's not make no mistake about it. In Omaha, Nebraska, we have one of the top college basketball recruits in the country, and Hunter Silas. Creighton University, you are on his top five list. Homegrown hero, would have done great things for the program. And don't put this on him. If he makes the decision not to go to Creighton, don't blame Hunter. Don't even do that. Don't even try. Don't even attempt. That's a kid making the best decision for himself. So don't do that. But is this how you guys are going to support people of color on your campus? Is this how you're going to support people of color in your sports programs? Using analogies referenced in plantations? Do you know what happened on plantations? Black women were raped on plantations. Black men were demasculated on plantations. Women and children and men hung on plantations, killed on plantations, worked in terrible conditions on plantations. Maybe you should do your research. Maybe you should go visit a plantation and put yourself there. Maybe you need to be in shackles and chains so, so you can experience what it's like to be on a plantation. Don't you ever in your life use an analogy like that and think that it's cool, think that it's acceptable, and think that it should be tolerated. Fire Greg McDermott. Don't wait to see how bad the backlash is going to be. Creighton, you want to be everything you say you are? Take a stand. Take a stand because right now there's no gray area. There's only black and there's white. And I'm not talking in racial colors. I'm talking about in decision making. I'm talking about in integrity as a university. Make the decision. Make the right decision. But the ball is in your court. This is Temperature Check. I am your host as always, man. Mr. Check the Temperature. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And like always, we're just getting started.